Hello, today is October 21st of 2020. And last night or this morning, I had a dream. And I'm just going to share it in kind of a generality of what happened. And I'm going to speak of... Uh, my children in this dream but it's really I believe that it's somewhat based on my own children but also on those who I would be required to teach as like children of uh, the truth should I have the truth and so in my dream my children had um, been successful at robbing a bank and I was with them as they were robbing the bank though I did not uh, also rob the bank I didn't say anything and I was with them as they got off scot-free or whatever the word is they didn't they didn't get charged with this and what was interesting was they had like legally taken out half from the bank and then went back through kind of the back side of the bank and robbed or illegally took from the bank um, the other half okay and so then afterward i you know where i once was kind of feeling free i went back to this place of feeling as though i was like uh the thief or the robber or the criminal and you'll see again i'm wearing my stocking cap again it's just because it's cold but sometimes when i wear this i think of the thief and so I witnessed as my children went back to playing games and I, being their father, knew their sin and knew that they had gotten away with it without being charged. And um, what happened in the dream was they were coming for me and challenging my integrity and challenging my honesty and challenging my truthfulness and I was in trouble I was being thrown into a pit and um, or or about to take some sort of punishment for this thing and it was by um, by the hands of men you know they were coming after me searching for me trying to find me and um and then my children laid down beside me as I was about to take my punishment and they said how sorry they were but there there was nothing that they could do to save me and so I was you know, entering into this place of being punished for kind of being a bad parent or a bad example onto my children. You know, maybe I knew that they were doing something that was wrong and I did not rebuke them. You know, I was witnessing their sin and not rebuking them of their sin. Um, you know, knowing that they had kind of a mm -hmm. opportunity to get off free I allowed them to go about it you know anyway and not rebuking them for the, the thing that they were doing that was wrong that I knew was wrong and I knew would get them either in trouble but in this case I was the one that was getting in trouble for this thing and so uh, you know I really took it to heart today and started to understand kind of like the heart of the father towards the children you know he he uh maybe sometimes he doesn't want to be like that harsh 
father that reprimands um, or gets his children in trouble. You know, but uh, the interesting thing was like I was uh, kind of feeling almost as, you know, almost as Jesus, I guess, but almost as Judas. It's kind of strange, like, you know, maybe I had, um, had somehow been betrayed in this thing, you know, by a Judas. Or perhaps I was as being betrayed by Jesus, you know, being that one that was lost, like that, that, uh, son of perdition that would, would be, uh, lost because, uh, the scripture would be fulfilled. And so, um, so tonight even, you know, I, I come down here to the garden often to just kind of pray and ponder and seek God and um you know before I came my my children were wanting to play games and you know it was just over the phone you know remotely they wanted to play some games and I they were very proud of some of the things that they had done and I just felt almost horrible within as I was saying hey I feel like I got some instruction from God and I need to see to it you know I need to I need to stop allowing my children to play games i need to stop allowing my children to do things that would lead them away from god that would you know maybe lead to sin that i wasn't rebuking that i wasn't teaching um and you know it was just kind of a hard thing to kind of have to tell your kids because you know they they're very innocent and they're very very young and they don't really know exactly what I'm dealing with and they don't really understand um you know like the severity of the situation where you know I do want to be a covering for them I do want to be a headship covering for them but I in doing that I need to actually show them and teach them the ways of the Lord and uh, you know it's not that I'm not gonna show forgiveness it's not that I'm not gonna show mercy it's not that I'm gonna not play games with them and have some fun times with them but if I do not teach them those things which I was taught how will they teach their children how will they know the truth that I have known that I have come to know only by seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things that I would have need of would be added unto me but if I get all those things added onto me and then I let all those things just fall away and perish what good is it so I need to try to hold fast that which I have that no man would take my crown not even my own children and that's a hard thing to understand but uh, I think a you know a healthy rebuke a healthy um, teaching sometimes it's kind of like a tough love where you know like your children keep going one way and some point you have to kind of like just tell them no you know I can't go with you in this you know I can pray for you and, and give you rebukes and chastenings and teach you to turn but it's ultimately you're the one that has to turn um and you know that was kind of true for me was you know as the parent or the t the head of the household i needed to turn um but i had come from a place where i was showing uh, forgiveness and mercy unto all because i believe that that was the heart of jesus and um but if there was a day when when uh when Jesus would suddenly come into his temple you know that was kind of like kind of like what I was dealing with like if Jesus wanted to come in to my temple and dwell with me he's going to say to me why are you not be an example to your children why are you not being an example unto your flock uh like a, a shepherd unto your sheep you know and um you know, all those things that I have taught you, why are you not doing them? Why are you just kind of playing games and, you know, living in a in a place of uh, getting away with your sin? 
okay and it's kind of like if i was to go to jesus and say jesus you know there is nothing that i can do to save you but i am so sorry for my sin okay that's kind of the place where judas was at where he had betrayed jesus and he felt so um helpless to to save him at that point he was trying to put it back like can i how can i re repair this thing that i have done you know and so i'm just trying to be obedient to the teaching and instruction but i recognize that maybe it's too late i recognize that maybe my uh opportunity you know to teach may be over you know maybe i've i've given my my best to teaching but i didn't do very well you know and i'm gonna have to take punishment upon myself for not having taught my children well and so i'm gonna try my best to be obedient unto god to teach the truth that set me free that would also show my children the way which they should also go and so um you know i believe it's like the spirit of truth that reveals the mystery of god that's been teaching me and guiding me and so there's there's very likely many children that need to learn and hear of this thing and there was one day where i felt like god had told me that i needed to teach the children and it was shortly after I had come to the gates and the gates were closed. And God said, teach the children and through the children I would be allowed to enter. And so, you know, it's like a burden of, you know, to whom much is given, much is expected. And, um, and I have no idea how to reach all these children that I'm supposed to reach. Maybe it's just my my own children but maybe it's much more you know maybe it's to seek and save the lost the lost children all those children that maybe they uh, for whatever reason were spewed out you know they were uh, lukewarm so they got spewed out of uh, Jesus mouth and he you know he rebukes them and chastens them because he loves them and he he gives them a recommendation to go uh, to these who have been tried as gold in the fire you know and have their eyes be anointed that they could see you know and that they can cover their nakedness and so i have to have a love for these children a love for these who were uh, spewed out because God may be sending them to me, and I need to be prepared for that. And when they come, I need to be able to teach them um, the ways of the Lord, to teach them uh, by an example. And, um, you know, my children be the first to tell you that I'm um, probably not that really stern father figure. Uh, maybe a little bit too gentle a little bit too forgiving and merciful uh, but when I see wrongdoing I need to be able to speak the Word of God to rebuke and chasten it with the Word of God and so I had a thought of you know starting a kind of like a uh, Word of God um, answer and response like where you know maybe you post a scripture and then somebody reads what you posted without putting any of their own words into it but gives you the word of god in exchange for it you know it's almost like uh, the word of god against the word of god you know and it, it's like this double-edged sword um, you might find in the scripture something that cuts you one way and also in the scripture something that cuts you another and it's all for us to uh, rebuke and chasten one another to come into conformance with this image of God this understanding of who God is and um, you know it's it's something that I believe God has used the spirit of truth to 
put me in kind of a, a snare or a trap um, where I would surrender and just say, okay, God, it's yours. This kingdom is yours. You know, the kings of this earth will be humbled. You know, maybe there was a time when I started to get understanding and I thought, wow, this is great. You know, I could, I could, I could build something with this, you know, or I could be something with this knowledge. And ultimately it, it kind of led me down this trap where, you know, now I'm here as the one who betrayed Christ, you know, saying, here's the silver back you know I don't want it I want to uh, follow after Jesus I want to be like him not greater than him or not least lesser than him but like him I want to be one who displays his love and it was all kind of this uh, path of going from being a like a double-minded man unto one who had to pick one side or the other and at first I started leaning towards the side of judgment and condemnation and then I recognized that by judging and condemning I was judging and condemning myself and so I turned towards the other side which was forgiveness and mercy and I found peace in that place and I believe that I found an understanding of the teacher in that place the one who said love your enemies you know forgive those who have trespassed against you you know it's so that you could be forgiven because if you are not willing to forgive you're basically like holding a judgment or you're holding something over somebody and by that manner which you judge you shall be judged and so it was in a place of forgiveness and mercy that I found the teacher Jesus and um But the hard part of that is it kind of is you just start to forgive and show mercy just every which way you go like okay that's pretty bad but we can forgive it that's really bad we're gonna have to forgive it you know you just kind of get in this pattern of forgiveness 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 mercy 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 and then eventually the trouble comes in when the the children start to think that they can get away with just about whatever you know that there's like there's nothing that they can't do or they won't get rebuked and chastened and, and perhaps punished for you know but basically in my forgiveness and mercy I was allowing the Lord to be the judge the righteous judge but what ended up happening in my dream was the children were getting away with it and I was being blamed for it. I was the one who was becoming, um, you know, blamed for the children's uh, sin, for not rebuking them, for not keeping them in line. And you could think of like an Adam who, uh, you know, maybe he took some heat for what happened with Cain and Abel. Like, you know, like if you had just raised them better Adam maybe this wouldn't have happened and so you know it's a kind of a heavy burden right now just because you know I love my children very much and in a strange way I feel like I cut them off which sounds really bad but I didn't I didn't ever cut them off from my heart I just you know, I'm just praying that they will know that I did it because I loved them, you know, and I didn't want them to have to see their father die for the sins that they were getting away with. Um, you know, that's like a pretty heavy, pretty heavy burden. Uh, it's almost like 
putting my children in the place of Judas, you know, so like, you know, they, maybe they betrayed me just as uh, Judas betrayed Jesus and, and that, that weight, that heavy weight that becomes upon their neck, uh, that burden, uh, it can be avoided if I would just um, be more of a headship, you know, still showing forgiveness and mercy and allowing the Lord Jesus to be the righteous judge, but to put out more of an effort, a uh, concerted effort with the Lord to teach the children in the way that they should go so when they grow older, they would not depart from their ways. You know, to, to teach those things, the commandments of God, the commandments of Jesus, to teach them to my children uh, in such a way that uh, they will know, you know, that I have loved the Lord, that I was willing to put aside all other idols, all other gains, all other things that were getting in the way of me teaching them the ways of the Lord, that they could also teach their children and have life. Apart from Jesus, there is no life. And so I have to like really remember that, that if I don't show this, um, this headship or this uh, almost like a shepherd unto the sheep, <laughs> As the gunfire is like that could be my end you know like if I don't teach them well I could take the blame for it I could take the fall for it I could be the one who uh, could have taught them could have showed them the way to Jesus could have saved them but as I was laying dying or about to take my punishment my children who didn't know the things that I knew they said they were so sorry, but that there was nothing that they could do to save me, you know. But if they had known Jesus, if they had known the truths that I had been taught, that I, if I had passed them down onto my children, then perhaps they could say that there was a way and that we should just trust in Jesus in Jesus there is salvation, you know, in Jesus there is resurrection, that they would know the same Jesus that I knew, you know, that maybe they could call upon Jesus and all those that were coming up against me would be required to walk away and not cast their stones at me. You know, they could protect me um, just as Jesus protected the uh, the woman who was the adulterous woman when he said, um, go and sin no more, you know, perhaps that would be part of my salvation would be just to uh, count on the teaching to my children for them to come alongside me and say, they would be like a protector for me, you know, maybe they'd have to take on their own sin a little bit and say, you know, we've sinned. We sin too, you know, take take some responsibility for their sin and and take it to Jesus, you know, take the load or the responsibility off of me. You know, maybe I had taken on the sin of the world all upon myself, but that was something that was never mine in the first place. It was Jesus, the Lamb of God, to take away the sin of the world. And maybe I was just holding it until such time as the children would learn what it means to trust in Jesus as their salvation that they would take their sins off of me and give them on to Jesus there is salvation in no other name alright God bless you in Jesus name